Uh, good day of you as well. Scored me some more batteries. Uh, Phillips boombox. I'll get to that in a minute. Got a good score this time. I've got about uh, 15 laptop batteries, uh, two SLAs. One's dead, and I got a 3.2 amp hour one, Century one, another one, which is, uh, had about 12.1 volts in it, and that seemed to have recovered nicely. Got love for energy, and there's a lot running off the sun in my solar system. I've got a couple of weak ones. I recycle, retest those, but they're pretty useless. They're about 1.8 volts. A lot of Panasonic's in this score. I'm happy with that. I've got these square form factor, um, they're the same type as an 18650, they're the same type of battery, but only uh, in this form factor. I kind of stupidly snapped the positive terminals off these ones. I looked very, very, very carefully, um, sort of on the bits I just snapped off, I mean very carefully, because this is only separated by thin plastic. I don't want to short that here. It's going to be a delicate, I'll give you a bit of um, uh, soldering flux, and just go a quick tap on there with the iron and it will solder back on. So your positives here, your negative, and your positive goes to this fuse. I'm going to keep that into a little something where you don't want the uh, fatness of an 18650, but you want the benefit in something small like this. I might put them in this little Logitech speaker. I'll get two of them side by side. I'll see if I can fit the whole four in there, make one, uh, one um, 3.7 volt battery. And I'll put this protection circuitry or back on it. Put all these in there. So the passive radiator was um before was hitting the uh <laughs> the other bat 18650s I had now the passive radiator was back and smashing up against it. It's got <laughs> made a hell of an annoying racket and I had bass going. Those batteries are good for something like that because I don't take up any uh, they don't take up much space. They're the same uh, type of chemistry as these are top of same type of battery. One I got out of them. That's complete dead. Resetting the CID did nothing, that's dead, so that's all right. The rest seem to be good so far. And this old Phillips boombox spatial stereo. Nicely featured old Phillips boombox, so I decided to grab it, add it to the collection. The speakers sound like crap though. I've got some 4 ohm speakers the same as that. And they're in here somewhere. And here they are. Oh, six times, 15 watt. Uh, I'll have to Google the um, amplifier chip, see how I can handle it. But if, it, if the amplifier chip in this boom box can handle this um, load, it should be good. Because these actually don't sound too bad. They sound better than them. They sound more like a proper speaker. Those um, Philips boom box speakers sound kind of tinny in there. They don't sound too nice. I've got those speakers there, 4 ohm, 4 watt, UPS branded speakers. They actually sound pretty good too. So I could use those as a better match for this, um, they'll fit in there, and they're electrically they'll fit. Same with impedance. There's old Foster speakers made in Singapore, those, yeah. They don't sound nice. So I'll put the other, upgrade the speakers and that. And the main issue with this, I just cleaned all the controls, it all works nicely. The cassette mechanism works, except typical Philips or Philux used um, gears, which is found commonly in uh, the material they made the gears out of. is commonly found in McDonald's cheeseburgers. Yeah, these cheese gears. Now, I think one's for the auto stop, and there's one that was up here, driven off this uh, um, capstan there. And it went in here somewhere, and that was, I picked it out. And that's in there. There it is there in two pieces. There's a couple of other gears that are trying to find compatible ones, but so far no match. It's one of them. This one here is for the take up, which is down the bottom here. You can see the little shaft down there. That they come off. So that drives the take up and the fast forwarding. I think the idea what this the idea of it was is to have a soft gear to minimize noise for a smooth running mechanism. <coughs> the only problem is they um yeah, it's like a McDonald's cheeseburger sitting in the back seat of a car for 20 years and it goes like that, the cheese. <laughs> That's what they're made out of. Uh, Phillips is known for that. Phillips love their cheese geese. So I'm in the process of just sourcing a new replacement gear. Pretty plasticky old mechanism, but has an interesting um, design with the heads, long life heads. It does have a nice feature on, on everything on it, so well, I'm going to fix it up anyway. 
Phillips did make um, interesting uh, mechanisms in their tape decks. It's pretty odd and sad that Phillips invented the cassette format, but then they cheaped it and they own cassette mechanisms. It's kind of stupid. By using McDonald's cheeseburger um, gears, you can see this where the other gear that come off there. That's the take up and the fast forwarding. So that has to be a uh, Dig around and find the new one for that. There's some of the teeth there, there's a tooth on the motor, there's some more of the teeth down there, so. It's got about as much teeth as a British, a traditional British smile. Uh, it's got your short wave bands and everything on it. Gotta clean all this up, you got AM, short wave and FM. Got line inputs and outputs, so it's a nicely uh, nice featured boom box. The mechanism for eject is kind of a pain in the ass. It sits like that, and after we uh, work out how it all goes back together, I want to finish with this. There's another bit of mechanism down here which goes for the uh, recording. And that spring down there which come off behind it. So, a rather complex mechanism from Phillips. I'm going to have to pull all this out. It's attached with something behind you, this actually lifts out. And they can unhook the whole complete frame there to get it all out to um, get to the gears behind it to change them. But Phillips made this a bit overcomplicated. But um, nothing too uh, difficult to fix. It'll be worth fixing, worthwhile when it's all done. I've got another area for it too. The other than just had scratchy pots, I cleaned it up and it works nicely. It sounds pretty good. The spatial stereo just makes it sound like it's in a tin can. It echoes a lot. It sounds like it's in an echo chamber. That's what that feature is. I'm not sure why, but I think when you listen to certain cassettes, it might give you that effect you're in a dance hall or something, the idea of it was. But yeah, I'm definitely going to change those speakers. So I'll leave them in there for now. I want to fix it and give you a demo. Yeah, they just sound too, um, they sound like speakers like that, clock radio speakers. For something like that, they should sound better than that. It's, uh, it's rare being boxed, but it's not stupidly or super rare. It's worth, um, I wouldn't throw it out as such yet, I'll yeah, just make it better. So since I've got better standing speakers, why not? It isn't a bad looking box after all. Just carefully. It's not a bad looking box, so it's worth the uh, effort to put some better speakers in it and get the uh, whole thing, the mechanism and the cassette working good again. I can, uh, yeah, do you like my old um, roll featured beam boxes? Anyway, uh, thanks for watching.